Buenos días, mis amigos. All right, Matthew 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. All right, so I want to make note of this wise. Who are the wise? Well, in Psalm 19, verse 7, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Now, again, you probably, maybe you've heard me talk about this before, but this uh, word, the simple, this is talking about dummies, right? The simple. The dummies like me, and maybe like you, but definitely like me. Making wise the simple. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So the wise here in Matthew 25 are the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and the foolish are the unbelievers verse 3 they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them and of course the oil represents the Spirit of God but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virg virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Now, it's interesting, the virgins arose that is symbolic for when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we will rise up to meet the Lord in the air. All right. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, Not so lest there be not enough for us in you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. All right, so they had their chance. The foolish had every opportunity they could ever ask for. And they still refused to get that oil. And then the bridegroom comes and the door is shut. Afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch, therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Alright? Now, I want you to understand this parable understand it in relation to Revelation 20. Alright, because there's a lot of false teachers out there who says the bridegroom comes and then you've got 1,000 years to go and buy that oil while the bridegroom is here. But this is, that is a complete conflict with what this parable is talking about in Matthew 25 when it says when the bridegroom comes 
and it's the marriage of the Lamb. The, the marriage, of course, is those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are resurrected at the last day. We are changed. We are in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and we shall all be changed. We go from corrupt, from uh, yeah, from corruptible to incorruptible, from mortal to immortal. We are transformed into our glorified bodies. First, the dead in Christ rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord right so that's the marriage when we come together with the Lord Jesus Christ in our glorified bodies and when that happens the door is shut all right so there is no 1,000 bonus years or 1,000 years to you know get another chance your chance is right now this is your only chance when Jesus comes it's the end of the world when it's the end of the world it's the end of this world right so there is no second chance after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven so people teaching this idea in Revelation 20 that there's gonna be a thousand years an, a thousand year opportunity to get saved after Jesus comes that, that's evil because you're telling people oh you don't have to believe in him now just wait till he comes and then believe him. think of that in the context of this parable the bridegroom comes there's the marriage. The door is shut. You see it? This idea that there's a thousand years after it doesn't make sense. It's not there. It's a conflict of what we read here in Matthew 25. And look I, I get it it's supposed to be like this it's so there's supposed to be false teachers everywhere on the day before the Lord comes it's supposed to be like this just like what we read in Matthew 24 when it says except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened all right, so if God were to allow things to continue as they are, there would come a point to where there would be nobody saved. So, clearly, there is more and more, increasingly more and more, false teachers. Now, why do you think Jesus warns us so many times in regards to the end of the world about deceivers and it's because it's getting worse and worse and worse so we ought to expect liars and deceivers to increase in the last days which we are obviously in right for there shall arise false Christ speaking of popes false prophets speaking of teachers and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect so even the saved are susceptible to being deceived by these people uh, you want to say oh this guy is such a great great guy he's a believer maybe he is but he he might be teaching falsely right and then of course the very first thing that Jesus says when asked about the end of the world he says take heed that no man deceive you the very first thing he says 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. So there's going to be a lot of people, and we see a lot of people today, saying that Jesus is the Christ, and they are deceiving many. Not some, not few, but many. Right? And of course, it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And if God were to let things play out the way they are, there would come a point where there would be no flesh saved. Nobody would be saved. The only saved people would be in the graves. Right? But for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. Right? And we could draw parallels... Um, with uh, you know what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah right where there wasn't even ten righteous there weren't even ten righteous in those cities of probably millions of people and then in the days of Noah in my very strong opinion there were billions of people and only eight souls were saved. Right? And then, of course, you got in Luke 18, where it says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith on the earth? So, very clearly, we have a lot of deceivers out there, and we gotta, we gotta check them, right? We gotta, don't just take anybody's word for anything. Take what somebody teaches, and then check it with what the Word of God says, right? And of course. This all begins with faith, right? You gotta have faith. You gotta have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You gotta have faith in the Word of God. And if you don't have either, you're not gonna understand nothing. But once you have faith in the Word of God, if once you have faith in Jesus, then you ought to have faith in the written Word of God. And these are not words of men. These are words that come directly from God. Think about what Jesus says. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. These aren't just words on a piece of paper or on your computer or, or what have you. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. 